3.4, converting units of measure. So a unit is a tool that we use to measure and organize the world. We can measure uh, length, weight, volume, time, and we use different uh, units in order to do that. So some lengths would be inches or yards or feet. Uh, we could measure weight, we could measure volume, time, we could look at hours, seconds, years. Uh, but we want to make sure that when we're looking at these units, we know what classification they go into. We use multiplication and crossing out or canceling units in order to convert from one unit to another. The reason we can cancel units is because if I have a fraction of 3 over 3, we know that that means one whole. I can do the same thing with units. So I can say that feet over feet converts to just one whole nothing. So the units will cancel out, and I'm left with one nothing. Now, we can only cancel from one unit to another as long as they're in the same family. And I use the word family because I want to make sure that they're in the same classification. You cannot convert from feet to hours. That doesn't make any sense. It has to be a conversion from feet to inches or from hours to years. Uh, so it has to be within the same realm of what you're talking about. So here's an example. I don't know what this is doing here. <laughs> Here's an example. How many cups are in 34 pints? So I'm going to start with my 34 pints. And because I'm going to be multiplying fractions here, I'm just going to put this over 1 because I know I need to have a fraction to multiply fractions. So I have 34 pints to start with. And I'm given this here that tells me that 1 pint is equal to 2 cups. So I'm going to set up my multiplication so that I have a pints on the numerator, which I already have, and a pints on the denominator so that they cancel. So I'm going to multiply by, I'm going to put the one pint on the bottom, two cups in the numerator. The pints and pints cancel out, and now I multiply my fractions. So I have 34 times 2, which is 68 cups and 1 times 1, which is 1, meaning that my answer is 68 cups in 34 pints. Uh, again, how many hours are there in 10 years? So this is one where I have to do two steps in order to get there. I don't know how many hours there are per year, but I know how many days there are per year, and I know how many hours per day. So I'm going to do this as a two-step uh, equation or a two-step problem. First, I'm going to start by saying that I'm comparing, uh, I'm starting with 10 years. And I'm going to put that over 1, because again, I need to have a fraction in order to multiply fractions. And I'm going to multiply so that my years are on the bottom. I know that one year has 365 days. So I'm going to do this multiplication because my years will cancel. And I have 10 times 365, that's 3,000. 650 days over 1. So when we talk about 10 years, we're talking about 3,650 days. I know you're probably thinking about uh, leap years. Don't worry about it. So here we have 3,650 days, and I need to convert that into hours now because that's what the t problem was asking me to do. So I'm going to rewrite this down here. And now I need to have days in my denominator so that they cancel. And I'm going to multiply by 24 hours in one day. Now, why can I multiply by these? This is equal to one whole. I can multiply by 365 days over one year because this together is one whole. These two values are the same. They're just written differently. So these answers aren't actually different, they're just written in a different way, and I can do that by multiplying by one in different forms. So I'm multiplying here by 24 hours in one day because that is equal to one whole nothing. Now, I have a day and a day. I have one in my denominator still because one times one. In my numerator, I have 3,650 times 24. I'm going to do that with a scratch up here. And I 
I'm left with an answer of 87,600 hours, which is my answer. I have 87,600 hours in 10 years. So I took this 10 years, I multiplied it by one, I multiplied it by one again, and I got this answer. Those two things are not different, they just look different to us because one is talking about years and one is talking about uh, hours. This problem, this next example here, Matthew rode his bike at 11 feet per second. How fast was this in miles per hour? So now we're talking about two units at the same time. We can't convert both units at the same time, so we're going to do one at a time. So I'm going to start with 11 feet per one second. And I'm going to go through this by canceling out units at a time. So I'm going to start with the feet. That works. So I'm going to multiply by uh, 5,280 feet per one mile because I want to convert to miles because that's where I'm going. And I should know because I live in Denver that it's 5,280 feet per mile. I have feet and feet will cancel out and I'm left with 11 miles in 5,280 seconds. Now, last problem, we only had one unit we were dealing with. Again, we have two here. So I've changed 11 feet per second uh, to 11 miles per 5,280 seconds. Now we need to go from seconds to hours. Again, I can't go from seconds to hours without doing that middle step of minutes. So I'm going to start by saying that there are uh, 60 seconds in one minute, and I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to go into hours. So I have seconds canceling, and I'm left with 11 times 60, that's 660 miles per 5,280 minutes. A lot of calculating, I understand that. As long as you know you're going step by step, you're all set. So once again, we started with 11 feet per second. We're multiplying by one, multiplying by one again, and we're going to do it one more time so that we have miles per hour instead of miles per minute. So 11, um, copy that wrong thing here, 660 miles Six hundred and sixty miles in 5,280 minutes. And I need to multiply that by 60 minutes per one hour. My minutes can cancel out here, and I'm left with miles per hour. And I get 660 times 60, uh, and then 5,280 times 1. So my denominator is 5,280 hours. My numerator is 660 times 660. miles uh, per 5,280 hours. So my question asked me to find miles per hour. If somebody asked me how fast I was going in miles per hour and I said that I was going 39,600 miles in 5,280 hours, they would look at me like I'm crazy. So I need to take this and convert it into something that makes sense to me, miles per hour. In order to do that, I need to set it equal to a proportion or equal to a ratio with one hour in the numerator or in the denominator, and this x is what I'm trying to find. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my equivalent ratio or equivalent fractions technique. I'm going to divide by 5,280. And I'm going to do the same thing in the numerator. If you do this multiplication out, you will see that x equals 7.5 miles per one hour. So if Matthew was riding his bike at 11 feet per second, he was riding at 7.5 miles per hour. It's pretty fast. This last problem here says how many yards in 288 inches? So I'm looking at inches and yards. 
288 inches over 1, because again, I need to multiply these, these fractions here. I'm going to multiply by how many inches there are in, I don't know how many inches there are in a yard, but I know how many inches there are in a foot. I know there are 12 inches in one foot, and I know there are 3 feet in a yard. So I'm going to do this again as a two-step problem. So here I have 288, uh, after my inches cancel, 288 feet over 12. And if I do this division, I would get an answer. What I'm actually going to do is continue multiplying and then just do one division at the end because it's easier for me. So I'm going to now multiply by one yard, um, three feet in one yard. These feet will cancel and I'm left with 288 yards over 12 times 3, which is 36. So I need to do this division here, and then I'll have my answer. So 288 divided by 36 is going to give me, let's try 36 times 4, no, oh, 8. 8 times 6 is 48. 24 divided by 6 is 48. Perfect. So when I do this division, I get 8, which means that 288 inches is the same as 8 yards.